What's up outdoorsy dudes and gals, I come to you again from the gear shed in the basement and today I will not be reviewing the BCA Tracker 3. Let me explain. So when I was buying my Beacon, because there's only three brands to choose from and a total of now five different beacons if you include the Tracker 4. I wasn't so much looking for the best beacon as much as I was looking for the beacons not to buy. And both Mammoth and Black Diamond, aka Peeps, which they've conveniently covered up the name of after their recent scandal, have both given me reasons not to buy their beacons, and for which reason I've gone with the Tracker 3. Now, I'm yet to touch the Tracker 4, it's just recently come out, so I won't be talking about that one today. But compared to Black Diamond's Beacon and the Mammoth Berry Box series, I would say that the Tracker 3 is the winner. Not because it's better than the others, but because the others are worse than it, if that makes any sense. The Mammoth Berry Box Beacons are confusing, unnecessary, and expensive. That's right, they are expensive. The Berry Box, the original, starts at 430 Canadian dollars, which is $60 more than the Tracker 3. And then the Berry Box S goes all the way up to 600 Canadian dollars, which is just ridiculous for a beacon. Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. So they're kind of touting, showing off these fancy features like graphics on the screen, making it easier for doing a search. But honestly, I think all those things get in the way. A beacon is an incredibly specialized piece of an equipment, and therefore it goes along with incredibly specialized training. So when you get into that emergency situation that you are potentially going to get into at some point, you should already know how to use your beacon and you're going to want it to deliver only crucial information. You don't want it showing you weird squiggly lines or little people for some reason or graphic art for whatever. I don't know why this is necessary. It's all just confusing. The thing I love about the Tracker 3 and the thing that the Berry Box can't seem to deliver is simplicity. You put it into transmit, it shows your battery percentage once. When you turn it on, that's the only time you need it is at the trailhead. All your lights are tested, and now the light's flashing to show you that it's transmitting. When you're in search, you get a number and a arrow. That's all you need. You don't need graphics. We don't, this isn't an art show, all right? We don't need that crap. And also, I don't wanna pay 60 to $230 more for a piece of equipment that does the exact same thing, except does it worse. So that's my rant on <laughs> the Berry Fox beacons. Now we'll move on to Black Diamond. So for any of you who don't know, Black Diamond is Peeps. Black Diamond and Peeps are two separate brands, but they're owned by the exact same company. And Peeps' old beacon called the DPS has since been upgraded to Black Diamond's new beacon. Now, there was a fatal issue with the Peeps DPS that killed a man in March 2017 and nearly killed another professional skier, Nick McNutt, just recently in March 2020. Now, you may or may not have heard of this because Black Diamond, aka Peeps, was very good at not telling people about it. Even though it was certainly the Beacon's fault that Nick's Beacon turned off and he was nearly killed in the avalanche, Black Diamond conveniently didn't say anything about it. In fact, they waited all the way until late 2020 when someone finally filed a lawsuit against them until they finally did something in the form of Instagram posts and, and telling people, oh, check this button and whatever. But basically, they totally ignored the issue despite the fact that it was happening on quite a large scale. Here's what happened to Nick. Nick was backcountry skiing near Redelac, British Columbia in March of 2020. He triggered a decently large avalanche. He got himself buried and all of his friends engaged in a search right away. Here's the thing though, they couldn't find a signal. That's problematic, obviously. Um, luckily, one of his friends hit a random probe strike and found him, and they dug him out within five minutes. That is the only reason he is alive. Not because of his beacon. His beacon nearly killed him. Here's what happened. When he <clears throat> was either touring up, doing a lap down, or perhaps during the avalanche itself, the beacon switched from transmit to the off position. So his beacon was off while he was buried under the snow. Therefore, it was of no use to the search team. 
Now, Black Diamond and Peeps did nothing about this, and in fact the issue actually arose three years earlier when someone was killed by this very problem, and of course we didn't hear about it. Basically what I'm getting at is, how can you want to buy a product from a company that reacts in that way? Especially when they claim that their top priority is our safety in the backcountry. I mean, obviously that's not the case. So, Peeps and Black Diamond are untrustworthy, in my opinion, and Mammoth just takes it further than it needs to go, both price-wise and functionality-wise. It's just too complicated. So, let's talk about the Tracker 3. And the best way to talk about it is, well, it's not too complicated, it's not too expensive, and I trust the company, at least thus far. If someone's nearly killed by one of these things, and I don't hear a big overwhelming response from Backcountry Access saying, we need to recall, we need to figure this out right away, then I'll be pretty concerned. But that is yet to happen. Now the Tracker 4, I'm yet to review that, like I said. But the Tracker 3, I would certainly say, is the best beacon out there. Not because it's so much better than the others, but because the others have given me reasons not to buy their product. And I think there's a very good reason why if you go to any AST course or join a group of backcountry skiers in the winter, most of them have BCA brand Tracker 2s or Tracker 3s. And I would say there's a very good reason for that because most of the other beacons are just not there yet. So that's my spiel. If you like the video, please, well, hit like and uh, subscribe for more like it. I'll be doing some more backcountry gear reviews uh, soon, probably tomorrow or the next day. And, um, yeah, stay up to date, stay safe if you're a new user of the backcountry, make sure you know how to use these pieces of gear because they're useless without the knowledge, and I will see you in the next video.